hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'm back with another diy video i'll be installing these 3d wall panels i'll link the information about these panels in the description down below there will be a video on my channel of how I constructed this entertainment floating shelf. So guys, let's just get right to the installation now. So I started off my project by using my level to draw a line at the side of the wall. One of the main reasons to catch a level line guys is that I can guarantee you that these walls are definitely not straight. I'm also drawing a level line at the top just to see how much unlevel these walls are. This step is optional because I'm going to start laying the tiles from the bottom up. So whatever space is left at the top, I'll just fill it out with the tiles. Now I'm arranging the tiles on the floor so that I can select a pattern for installation. So there are basically two patterns so I'm rotating the tiles just to find the desired pattern that I'm going to use. Now I'm cleaning the wall so the wall should be flat, dry, smooth and solid and a requirement is that the wall should be painted with emulsion paint. I'm using a heavy duty construction Gorilla Glue to attach these panels to the wall. So guys, I'm applying the glue around the corners of the panel. Remember that these panels are 3D wall panels. So some of the areas are raised and some are flat. So I'll be applying the glue on all the flat areas correctly so that these panels can be adhered to the wall properly. Press the panel to ensure all its corners and edges adjoin the surface. So guys, you have to avoid this strong pressure on the, the relief or the relief part not sure about the pronunciation but that relief part is the the 3d um the three-dimensional part that that part is a part that is raised raised off from the flat area so you cannot put a lot of pressure on that part i'm measuring and marking out the area for the plug because i have to cut out that space I'm using a jigsaw to cut. For the other cuts, I use a utility scissors. There are two reasons for using the scissors. One, the scissors gives a cleaner and straighter cut. And two, these tiles are not as hard as expected. So these tiles, they are PVC tiles. It's like a little hard PVC, but it's like, a hard cardboard so it's in between so it's more of a hard cardboard but i guess it's, it has some pvc material in it so it's not very hard to cut i must say i was a bit disappointed when i first saw these styles just by looking at it and just by just touching it you know i was thinking that these styles are not as sturdy but after starting to use these styles I realize they are extremely sturdy and the finishing guys you have to stick around to see the finishing is extremely beautiful so after applying each tile I use a dry rug to rub in between the flat space of the tile just to ensure that the tile sits properly on the wall I have decided not to use any spacers I hate spacers. I'm not bashing any tiler out there. I'm not a professional tiler, 
but I eat spacers. Maybe some tiles require spacers, but I just eat those big white space in between the tiles. I know that there are small spacers, but I prefer to use my potty knife and make the little space in between the tile and put my grout in between if I have to grout. So as you can see, I'm using my scissors now to make the cut and you can also use a stencil knife, you know, a utility knife also, but I'm pretty glad I'm happy that the scissors can make the cut because it helps me to finish the job much, much quicker. So guys, I'm just basically doing the same, going through the same process. So I'm going to speed up the video. So before I do that, I'm just going to tell you some of the tools that I use. I use a tape measure, a level, a pencil, a silicone gun, and you definitely need a bucket of water. You need a putty knife and some fine sandpaper. You need a lot of old towel or old rug because definitely you have to rub in between you have to do a lot of cleanup because i cannot let the glue dry on the surface the good thing about the gorilla construction glue is that it becomes stacky between two to three minutes so after it becomes stacky all the excess that was left on the front part of the tile i was able to just peel them off or just rub them off with the dry cloth As you can see guys, the wall has been completed. So it took me two days and I use four boxes. In each box, there are 12 tiles. So that's it. So these tiles guys, they are paintable. I'm going to paint the wall. They come in various colors. I've seen white, black, gray. Apparently, the homeowner could not get the color they wanted so they have decided to buy the white and then you know paint the desired color that they want so stick around guys you have to see the end results i'm using Berger royal in the color gray i don't remember the exact name of the color but the code is 8094 the Royal gives a very high satin sheen finish. I chose the Royal because I know that the type of material that makes the tile is going to absorb the paint. So hence, when the, when the painting is finished, the sheen is not going to be as bold as how it should be. I started off by using the roller, but I realized that some of the paint was running from the raised area, the relief part. So I had to go back over with the paintbrush to clean it up. So I just continued the project and finish it off with the paintbrush. So guys, this is the finished look. I am extremely happy with the color. The sheen is not as high as expected, but the home owner, they are happy. They are not so much into the sheeny look. They prefer the matte, subtle finish. So guys, thank you so much for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. 
remember to look out for part two of this video when i'm gonna complete that entertainment unit bye guys i'll see you in my next diy video